Hey, what's up? It's Ike Paws. Long time no see. I have been away from the camera for a good reason. I had my, I got my face burned right over here by a rove beetle deep in the forest of Japan. It's called Yakedo Mushi. It literally means burn bug. It burned, it burned my face with its blood. It's a long story. Anyways, it's getting better. So I'm making this quick little video because I had some questions. Um, I had a, a comment question. I had some questions via email asking me about this new software that's coming out, which is called Math Worksheets Generator. It quickly creates a number of different math operation workbooks. So for example, addition, subtraction, long division, fractions, even time, time activities. What else? Step multiplication. Um, and some other ones that's, uh, that, that are escaping me right now. Anyways, one of the great questions I got was, uh, this lady asked, um, how do I, how do I, uh, pair the workbook I'm creating for the grade level of my target customer? So what I mean is on Amazon, if you look up, um, uh, for example, fractions workbook for, uh, grade six, right? So we have grade six, grade seven, different school grades, right? So she asked me, how do I, how do I know what grade goes with what math operation, right? So a really simple way is to go on Google and ask, when do uh, people learn X, Y, Z math operation? So when do people learn, when, when do children learn uh, multiplication? For example, it's going to give, it's going to, it's going to tell you, and uh, they, they will learn multiplication in grade three or, or in the third grade, for example. So that's how you find uh, the, the exact grade for the specific math operation. So you can create your workbooks and be accurate and be pinpoint with the type of customer, or I should say the parents that will buy these types of math education books for their children. Okay, another question I got is regarding uh, how do I start off the workbook? So what I recommend is you don't just start off with the main content. You wanna ease people into the content. So for example, let's say you have a math activity workbook, which is composed of addition, uh, subtraction, and time time. So let's say this is for first graders, second graders, around there, right? So what you wanna do is between each of these different uh, math operations, so in the beginning, for so if you have an, an, an additions portion, like uh, two plus two is four, blah, blah, blah. Before that page, you wanna make, you wanna create a little page explaining how to add. You might wanna have five little sticks and then have five, five more little sticks and then count them and have that description there that these sticks added up together equals 10, okay? That's a very easy way to, uh, to ease in your, your, your audience, the little kids, to uh, actually understand what addition is, okay? So that's just, that just takes one page. And then after your addition uh, um, operations are done and you move into subtraction, you wanna do the same thing. You might wanna have uh, four little sticks and then have two little sticks. And then if you take away these two little sticks, you end up with two sticks left. Around, you know, something like that. You wanna make it nice and simple for your target audience, okay? So don't just go right into the actual content of the of the work math workbook you want to ease them in with a little explanatory type of page that goes over what they're going to go through in this book okay so that's that's the major thing okay now when it comes to covers you can definitely create your covers on you can definitely create your covers on canva i actually have a a canva template you can use within my bonus bundle, I highly recommend if you do get Math Worksheets Generator, you get it with my custom bonuses for a myriad of reasons, you can check out the link below. But besides that, you can create your, your covers on Canva. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I A lot of my best-selling books on Amazon, I used Canva to create those covers. However, these days, now that I've started earning, I've been doing this for two years now, now that I, you know, now, now that I earn regularly with uh, Amazon KDP, I do outsource my covers on Fiverr, but you gotta be very, very careful, okay? I had a, a, an incident where Amazon c contacted me and said, hey, uh, I, forget, I forget exactly the phrasing, but, there's some some copyright material on your cover, and I got to my the person I I I, uh, I freelance or I outsource it to, and she's like, yeah, I'm sorry, but the font is not public domain. It's not open source. It's not. I don't have the commercial rights to it, and I I, I lost my. I got really upset. <laughs> Anyways, luckily, 
thank the heavens, but Amazon didn't even shut down my, my, uh, my account. A lot of times they just do that. So you got to be very careful who you contact and when you contact your, uh, the freelancer on Fiverr or on Upwork or wherever, make sure I didn't make, I made this mistake. I hope you don't make this, this mistake. Make sure they have the commercial rights to whatever they create for you and that you can pass it along if Amazon ever inquires about your cover or whatever. Okay. So it's really important you vet your, uh, your, the people you, you, you hire on Fiverr or and or Upwork or wherever you go. Okay. Really important. These three little tips will help you a lot to actually earn, uh, potentially, I can't say you will earn, but potentially earn with math, uh, worksheets generator. Again, find out what grade, uh, your, the students or the people who will be using your math workbook, what grade they're in. Okay. You can easily do that with Google. Uh, at what age do kids start learning multiplications? And they'll tell you the age six through, I don't know, six through eight. And they might, and then of course you want to say what, what, uh, what grade are kids in grade eight, for example, and they're going to tell you six. Actually, that's a little bit too young. Anyways, the point of the matter is Google will give you that information. Second, when you create your covers, no, no, no. Second, <laughs> when you, uh, when you create your actual book, the interior of your book, you want to have some pages explaining what they're going to learn, uh, in the file in the following pages, right? And then when you go on to new content, so first addition, explain what addition is, addition, and then before you get into subtractions, you wanna explain what subtractions are. It just takes one page, it doesn't take a lot of time, you can do it on Canva, and you wanna add those in, really important. And third, and arguably most important, when you outsource, when you get that person to create your cover for you, if you decide to go the route, you don't have to, when you do, you vet them to the umph degree, make sure they have the, the, the commercial rights to whatever font, to whatever background image they use, to whatever main elements they have within the cover, make sure they have it, okay? That's it, this works, I can tell you, I have lots of proof, check it out down below, and if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, be good, take care, don't forget to like and subscribe, bye-bye.